From the Oklahoma Newsroom, it's another Thunder Thursday. I'm here with part of our Thunder coverage team, columnist Barry Trammell and Thunder beat writer Brett Dawson. And even though it's Thunder Thursday, we're just going to fess up. We're taping on Wednesday because we expect all of you to be with your families on Thanksgiving. And we will be as well. In fact, we've even got some uh, family here. Barry's two of his granddaughters are in-house film before a live studio audience <laughs> and outside in our green room brett's parents so uh, we've got family here we hope you're with family hope you're enjoying yourselves but we got to talk a little thunder because the nba season does go on as we're taping this on wednesday the thunder are actually preparing for a wednesday night game in sacramento but we do have uh, some more evidence to talk about after recent games including a Lakers game that is, frankly, Brett, it's, it's following script. It's really become sort of a game-by-game -game script for these guys. Yeah, it's, you know, it's becoming a trend, and it's not a good trend. Uh, these slow first-quarter starts, uh, sometimes the defense has been bad. Sometimes the offense has been so bad that it's leading to easy points for the other team. A lot of turnovers are happening in first quarters. Whatever is happening, uh, something has to change, whether that's a lineup change, whether that's uh, just a, uh, some kind of offensive adjustment. Billy Donovan is a little bit perplexed by this, and it's easy to understand why. If you look at them statistically, Statistically, they've gotten better each quarter defensively over the course of the year, but the first quarter is by far their worst. They're giving up about 107 points, I think, per 100 possessions in the first quarter. That number goes down into the 90s in the, in the third and fourth, but this thing, they can't seem to get it fixed. And whether the, the solution is to change the lineup or, or change an approach or change, I don't know, but something's got to change. Well, and it, yeah, and then it brings you to fight back mode the rest of the game, and then we've seen end of game scenarios not be good, but Barry, let's, let's talk about the beginning for just a second. Is there a fix in your mind as you've watched these first 15 games? Well, it's, what, it, it's a conundrum because the, uh, the starting lineup or the starters have been generally more successful yeah. than the bench. I mean, yeah. even last night, you look at the plus minus numbers dominated by the starters. While people like Jeremy Grant and Ennis Cantor are way down in the double digit minuses. So it's, it's perplexing and it's gotta be driving Billy Donovan nuts because they're losing games because of defense, and this is supposed to be a team that wins with defense. This is not going to be a team that's successful uh, by scoring a bunch, by, by efficient offense. Their offense is going to, be, uh, going to be hit and miss. It's going to be uh, fits and starts. And uh, when, you, when you lose de games by defense, that's got to be frustrating on a team that's got Andre Robertson and, and Steven Adams and Russell Westbrook. So. Uh, it, this is a, this is a, a sort of a tense time in this Thunder season. Well, is a lineup change? Is that maybe the way this is going to have to go? You know, the problem with that is what's the lineup change? Yeah. I mean, I think that if you look at a weak link in the starting lineup, maybe it's Domas Sabonis, maybe. And maybe you would say, well, maybe Jeremy Grant is the guy who goes in there. He's giving them a nice spark off the bench. The problem with that to me is if you go with Russell Westbrook, Victor Oladipo, Jeremy Grant, all in your starting lineup, who is the guy that comes off the bench and gives you a spark? Who's that energy guy? I think Grant is really suited to that role, and so I don't like the idea of moving him into that lineup. So I don't know that there's an easy fix in the starting lineup. One thing they got to do is just take better care of the ball, and I don't know exactly how you make that happen, yeah. um, but they're doing a better job of that as the game progresses. For whatever reason, in the first quarter, something's not going there. And maybe the thing is, Russell Westbrook should just not pass like he didn't do in the fourth quarter. <laughs> They seem to be a lot better when they do that. <laughs> well, speaking of Russell Westbrook in the fourth quarter, you know, he has a, a big scoring fourth quarter, but takes a shot at the end of the game, guys, after Nick Young hits that desperation three, after, frankly, Russell Westbrook didn't guard him very well in the sequence that led up to that game winner. Then, you know, it's, a, it's a three guys, two guys on him, one guy running at him. He takes a three with about two and a half seconds left. Didn't seem like the best decision in my mind, Barry. No, uh, you know, Westbrook had some moments, uh, frustration really built up, I yep. thought you could see in Russ, both early and late. Uh, now, sometimes frustration works for Russell Westbrook. He had got incredibly hot in the fourth quarter and, and brought him back uh, and, and gave him that momentary lead. So it's a, uh, you know, sometimes you have to ride with Russ, but he's coming off that, that uh, that uh, last second shot in, against Indiana to send it into overtime. His confidence at an all-time high. He'd been making a bunch of threes. It was pretty clear he was bound to take that last shot. It seemed like the Lakers did a nice job, blew up the inbounds. It didn't really work the way they wanted it to. Uh, got it to Adams. He just, you know, he's not going to do anything with it. He just gives it to Russ as soon as he can. So it was just a bad deal. You want to see when you're down two, you can drive. You don't have to shoot yeah. a three. You can drive. I'd like to see somebody get fouled in the last five seconds, be on this foul line instead of having to throw up a miracle shot. Yeah. Particularly just before that, Russ had driven 
And Larry Nance was like, this guy's not passing. He jumped to contest the shot before Russ even left the floor. He made the pass to Adams. They get an easy basket out of it. Maybe something like that happens if you create a driving opportunity again. Well, and, you know, I think that I, I'm, sort of, I'm sort of torn on the Westbrook 3 situation because while we obviously know his driving ability and you really want to see him do that, I know as his career progresses, he's going to have to develop that outside shot. So the only way to develop it is to actually shoot it. So I get it. But then in situations like last night, I think, you know, you guys referenced the fact that the Lakers were pretty, you know, it was pretty clear that they knew he was going to take the shot and they defended it as such. Then I almost want to get back into my my uh, black and white area with Russ on the threes. No more threes for Russ. But it, it can't be that way. They obviously have to get that from him sometime. But it was just uh, it was it was not the best ending sequence. I don't think for Russell Westbrook on either end of the court, which is a shame because he was so spectacular up until that final final sequence. Well, in, in fairness to them defensively, they did make Nick Young walk. Yeah, right. He did take five Once, steps twice, three he times. Took, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and. To me, when you look at the last 10 seconds, most of the times you're going to miss a shot in those cases, both, both sides. Turns out Nick Young hit his, Russ missed his. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the breakdown was on the defense. They got switched up. They got confused. Uh, everybody was in scramble mode. Nick Young, he's the kind of, you know, he's such a goof head. He'll, he'd throw it in no matter what you do. <laughs> but you wouldn't want to leave him open. Yes, he walked. But he was pretty wide open. A lot of confusion with Oladipo, Westbrook, uh, Jeremy Grant. A lot of people got out of sorts, and and I think they had a foul to give for crying out loud. So I mean, that'd been a great time, you know, take a foul with eight nine seconds left, make the Lakers start over with no timeouts. Mm -hmm. uh, but it just just didn't go Oklahoma City's way. Well, guys, now uh, the Thunder's through 15 games again as we talk on Wednesday, uh, taping Thunder Thursday early with the holiday. Through 15 games. 8-7 and seven right now, sitting tied for 6th in the Western Conference with the Lakers. And we did a little math before, and we think that the Thunder right now would win that tiebreaker. So to be in that 6th spot, and obviously there's not a whole lot of separation right now between, say, you know, spot 2 and 3 and where they are at 6-7 there. Um, what stands out, Brett, in your mind about these first 15 games for this team? Well, I think some of what Barry said, look, we knew they were going to be limited offensively. We knew they would have some trouble scoring. We knew they'd have scoring droughts. That's just kind of the team they are. They're going to rely a lot on Russell Westbrook. Victor Oladipo has been okay offensively. He's had his moments. Uh, a lot of guys have had their moments. I think the thing that stands out to me is there's a little bit of, I, I would say, there are some disconcerting things about their defense. There are some problems that they're having consistently. Uh, Billy Donovan has talked for two weeks about corner three-pointers, mm -hmm. and yet you're seeing some really open ones uh, against the Lakers, who are a very, really good three-point shooting team. Um, you know, I, I think they've got to get the defense squared away because the offense, unless they make a move, is not going to be consistently good. It's just not going to happen. So they've got to be consistently good defensively. And the fact that they have some ups and downs, I think, is a little bit – it's too soon to call anything alarming, especially when you have a winning sure. record through 15 games. But it, it's, it's disconcerting a little bit, I would think. As I'm looking at uh, some stats here, opponents are shooting – 35.5% from three, which is frankly a little bit higher than yeah. you'd want it to be. You, you know, Thunder shooting a little under that at, at 33.8. So defense, Barry, you've said it. We've talked about it, you know, ad nauseum in here that the Thunder has to win with defense. It seems like that three-point defense, we knew three-point shooting was going to be a question mark. It seems like three-point defense and maybe some other areas of defense will have to improve. Well, what's maddening is the Thunder plays good stretches of defense. Yep. Last night, Lakers get shut down for the last three, three and a half minutes until Nick Young's game winner. At Houston, the Rockets, the best scoring team in the league, perhaps this side of Golden State, don't score for six and a half minutes. Yep. So this team is capable of the defense. Mm -hmm. They just don't see it. And here's the thing. Defense shouldn't slump. Offense is going to slump. Good shooters are going to miss shots. You're going to get out of rhythm. There's no reason for defense to get out of rhythm. Now, I do think there's some adjustment going on. Oladipo's new to the system. Yep. Uh, Sabonis is new to the whole dang league. Um, you know, Jeremy Grant just got to town without a training camp. So a lot of these guys are adjusting. Not everybody's defense is the same. Uh, Scotty Brooks's defense is, was not the same as Billy Donovan's defense is, so everybody's got a, a sort of a learning curve. Thunder's going through that, but they've got to get past that learning curve, and they've got to, got to buckle down and do what Brett said early. They've got to play good quor first quarter defense. After that, they tend to play pretty good defense, and that's really what they're going to need to, uh, to get past this 8-7 start, which frankly is disappointing considering the schedule. Yeah. Very easy schedule, 10 home games, 5 road games. 
you, if you're a good team, you should be better than eight and seven. Well, and after a six and one start to be eight and seven now, you know, they've been a little streaky. Um, we'll get to, uh, we'll talk here eventually about, you know, biggest surprises, biggest, uh, you know, maybe on the positive and negative side. We'll talk about that in a second. But, um, you know, as we look at this roster, do you guys feel like this is the roster that we're going to see the Thunder play with come the All-Star break? Are, are we at the end of the – I mean, where where is this roster and where is its evolution as you think about now and in the future, Brett? Well, I don't think it's the same roster we're going to see by that point. I mean, I can cheat and say it's absolutely not because Cameron Payne is going to be back at True. some point. Okay. And I think Cameron Payne matters. Yeah. Um, you know, they don't have a lot of guys. When Westbrook's off the floor in particular – there's almost nobody to create shots. Oladipo can create something for himself. He's okay at creating for other people. I think that's been a little bit disappointing. He played some point guard in Orlando. I feel like he ought to be doing a few more things with the ball in his hands when Westbrook's off the floor. Um, Samaje Christian has been good, I think better than most of us would have expected him to be. Uh, but they need Cameron Payne. They need a guy like that to help kind of get the offense going. And if nothing else, maybe he's a trade chip. Maybe he's a guy who helps you get a guy uh, who can give you some scoring at that three spot. But I, I think... I think there's still a move to be made. I think there's a change to be made for them to get somebody else who scores. But they're not a team that can afford to, I think, uh, upset some of this defensive balance they have and some of the chemistry they have. And so, you know, the guy we always go back to is Rudy Gay, who they're going to see tonight as we record this in Sacramento. I don't know that there's a real obvious trade out there, but I still feel like there's a move to be made. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of people, I think guys have been asking me, and I'm sure you've heard it too, what about Ennis Cantor? Offense, they want to see more offense, but – He's such a defensive, I won't say liability, because I don't think he's quite to that level anymore, but he's just not, he's not as good defensively as some of these other guys. And if you're going to win with defense, you've got to have those defensive guys out there maybe a little bit more than somebody like Ennis Cantor. Does he become Barry? Is he a chip? They may be looking to deal. I would be surprised if they trade Ennis Cantor now um, for any kind of, roster enhancement. I think Ennis Canner's contract is the kind of thing you try to trade to enhance your free agent uh, mover, maneuverability come summer. Okay. So I think it's possible they would move Cantor. Uh, I think it's, I think it'd be, I would be surprised if Ennis Canner's on this roster next September. Yep. Uh, but not surprised but not if he's at the end of the year. Right. Okay. Um, and you know what, I don't think Sam Presti has championship aspirations this year. I don't no. think he has his head in the clouds. He knows what this roster is. I don't think he's going to make a, uh, a long-term uh, trade for short-term gain. I think uh, he's more likely to just write it out. And uh, I do think there will be a trade, though. There always is. Yeah. I mean, they hardly ever do they sit pat. They've already made a trade in, during right. the season with Jeremy Grant. So yeah. uh, I would be surprised if they, if they sit still here, but I doubt it's anything major. With Rudy Gay... Fresh in everybody's mind, Brett, as you mentioned, uh, in Sacramento, uh, the uh, Wednesday night opponent, as we tape this on Wednesday, our Thunder Thursday, um, is, he, is he a viable answer? Is he a guy that you could reasonably see the Thunder going after? Could I reasonably see them going after him? Yes. Is he a guy that solves a lot of problems? He helps because they don't have a lot of scoring at a spot where in the NBA teams score. You know, you're, you're, the three is a position where you expect to have some scoring and some shooting, and Andre Robertson is not a guy who provides a lot of that. He can make an outside shot, but he's really a defender. That's what he's there for. Um, you know, that would give them an offensive enhancement. But again, and we, I don't know how many times we've said this, everybody seems to get better when Rudy Gay gets out of town, and every team that has him seems to be willing to let him go somewhere else, and so you wonder about how much impact he's going to have on winning. Right, and is he going to be here beyond this year with his contract situation? Well, I'm not sure they'd want him to be. But well, frankly, I mean, and maybe they would, but uh, <laughs> but that's, you know, I, I would be and surprised. And then how much, how much more does he help this team? Is he worth five more wins is he worth I mean right. at is what, he worth Cameron Payne right that's, the answer yeah, that's is probably no that's yeah. the biggest question is he worth Cameron Payne and as I said they don't have a lot of guys a guy on a rookie contract who looked last year like he had something to give you mm -hmm. uh, who does create his own shot and is a, is a good enough defender to play for you that, that's a guy who has some value on that contract in particular is Rudy Gay worth that he's the obvious piece to move in a, in a deal like that and he's the guy who uh, we know that the, the vertical reported was in that discussion when they were talking about Rudy Gay but you know that's that's potentially a short-term, yeah. maybe not even a fix at small forward to give up a guy who long-term could really maybe help you in Cameron Payne. We don't know yet. Okay, so through 15 games, we're looking at this to say, unlikely this roster is the roster that finishes the year 
but seems seems kind of tenuous that Rudy Gay is the guy yeah. that, that gets at it. All right, let's talk about, uh, as we look a little bit more broadly here for a minute during our Thunder Thursday, about this team. Barry, when you think about surprises this year, what have you been most surprised by, either on the positive or negative side? Um, I've been completely surprised pleasantly by Jeremy Grant. He's way better than I thought. Mm -hmm. um, now, he, I, think he, I think he's a good defender. I think he can be an excellent defender. I think he's struggling right now in defense, uh, just getting adjusted. But he's much better. He was four or five from the field, I think, last night. And he's, he's helping them offensively. And what we were told was, ah, this guy can't shoot a lick. He actually is not bad on offense. So uh, uh, he's, been a big, he's been a big addition to this team. I'm very pleased with uh, Jeremy Grant. Uh, I've uh, been disappointed in Steven Adams' offense, but I think that's hand-related. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm ready to just say he's just been bothered by that hand. So, um, you know, that's, that's the major ones, individuals, mm -hmm. that stick out to me. What about you, Brad? Yeah, Jeremy Grant was the same thing for me. Uh, it was my, the real obvious answer because, again, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time talking to him uh, a week or two ago, and he told me he expected to shoot the ball a lot better this year. He's a guy who's played a lot of power forward in Philly. Mm -hmm. uh, he's learning to play small forward. To Barry's point, defensive, he's making a lot of defensive adjustments right now because he's just learning to play the small forward. That's a completely different position when you guard the pick and roll in the NBA. Are you sticking with the big guy? Are you going to have to switch out and handle the ball, uh, defend a ball handler more? He's learning all those things. He's worked a lot on his outside shot. He's a lot better player than I expected him to be. Um, and he has been a really big surprise to me. I, I, and I'm, I'll say the same thing about Adams, but to, to expand a little, I've been slightly disappointed, and I hate to pin this on him some more, but I've been slightly disappointed in Victor Oladipo in particular. I think he's a guy they need to be staggering. They are trying to stagger with Westbrook, who I think should help you create some things and do some other things offensively. He's just not been very good with Westbrook off the floor. When they're playing together, he's been pretty good. Um, I, I think the, the moments without Westbrook, to me, have been a little bit disappointing to this point. Yeah, and I'm looking here at some stats, guys, and Victor Oladipo still second leading scorer at 16.7 points a game. Um, but you look at things like, uh, you know, shooting percentage, he's uh, shooting 40. 44% from the floor, not good from, uh, uh, better from three actually than I, than I was thinking he was at, at 41.8, uh, but still not sort of getting that big spark, I think, that a lot of people expected. And with the contract, um, you know, that he was given, I think the expectation is more than 16.7. And not that that's bad because he is adjusting, but I do think that that's an area where you've got to think they want to see continued evolution there. Um, guys, before the year, a lot of talk about Russell Westbrook and the chase to triple-double. Brett, you, you had a chance to talk to Big O about that, and um, it's obviously something that we're uh, aware of and, and you know, triple-double watch all the time. Right now, uh, through 15 games, Russell Westbrook, 31.8 points, 9.6 uh, rebounds, and 10.6 assists. Obviously not far off that magic triple-double mark. Is this feasible? Does it feel more feasible through 15 games? Sort of. He's real close. I mean, like, to be that close on the rebounding, uh, you know, Oscar Robertson said when I talked to him about it, rebounding is the hardest part for a guard. Everybody, that's, that's, that's obvious. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to be hard to get that number up and maintain it. Um, I, I'm surprised, frankly, that he's, he's well over 10 on the assists right now, that he's close to 11. Um, just because I wasn't sure about the rest of them offensively. But you look when Victor Oladipo's on the floor, he's assisted a lot to Oladipo. I think Adams has got room to improve offensively. Obviously, I think as that hand gets better, he will. So I, I think the assist numbers have a chance to stay there. We know, obviously, the points are going to stay up in that 30-point range somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, I don't think he's going to do it because I just think – you look at what he's doing every night and you look at how hard this is to do and what a load he's carrying all the time. And I don't think you can sustain that for 82 games, but he's going to be right there. Yeah. Def you can't do it from behind. In other words, if he was averaging 7.6 rebounds a yeah. game already, you'd say it's over, yeah. but he's right there. So, you know, he's got a shot yeah. and I'll tell you this, if he's within a whisker of it, you know, in the last <laughs> two months, uh, everybody wear a helmet when you're playing because he's coming for every rebound, which is to Russell's credit. So uh, he's got a shot at it. And just, just the idea that he's got a shot at it yeah. is just kooky. Yeah. So uh, that'll be fun to watch. Hopefully that'll be a side story for us here in Oklahoma City following the Thunder and not something that sort of consumes us. You know, hopefully they'll actually be in the playoff race the last two months. Um, uh, I hope that becomes sort of a secondary story. Well, and uh, let's let's wrap up our Thunder Thursday with Russell Westbrook, a little more Russell West, Westbrook talk, because obviously the stats, we figured there would be big numbers, you know, whether triple-double or not, 
you know, that, that is still to be determined. But how would he lead this team? How would he perform on this team? Obviously, uh, big questions coming into the year with a, with a newer roster around him, no Kevin Durant. Um, Brett, what has stood out to you about how Westbrook has taken on that role of leader this year? I think he's been great with the younger guys. I think he's done a really good job of pulling DeMontis Sabonis aside and pointing out things to him. I think he's doing those things really well. I think he's helped Jeremy Grant along a whole lot. I think he's helped Oladipo a lot with the offense. Again, I say the numbers when they're on the floor together versus not. I think Westbrook has been a big assist to him, both just in terms of his play and in terms of learning how to play and learning how to be on a winning franchise. Uh, I, I think all those things. I think he's done a great job with that. Uh, something you mentioned earlier, Barry, I, I think he's showing frustration sometimes, and I think it's more important now that he do a better job of hiding that. It's, it's going to be hard. Russell wears his heart on his sleeve. We know that. We know he's going to play the way he plays. Um, but he's the singular guy now. He's the singular voice. And so when he's frustrated, uh, I think some of that is going to kind of bleed over to other guys. I think he probably has to do a better job of that. But I, I think, you know, in terms of what they expect out of him from a leadership standpoint, I think he's been really good. Yeah. Barry, I mean, we've, we've seen his evolution year to year to year. I mean, every year he seems to do something more impressive. Just when you think he's going to max out, he does something else. What's impressed you most about this next evolution of Russell Westbrook? Russell Westbrook, what, 9.0? Well, I would say what's most impressed me is something that had already impressed me in the last couple years. He went from a good passer to a great passer, and frankly, he's gotten even better at it. He sees the court in a way that is way underrated. People think of him as just an athletic guy that somehow gets it done on the basketball court, but he sees the court in the way that, that the great point guards of, of NBA history see it. I mean, he, he makes passes the, where there's not anybody there, uh, no opening, but by the time the ball's there, there is somebody there, there is an opening. So the way he sees the court running that offense is fantastic. I would like to see Russell be a little bit more on an even kill. You know, the, he'll go stretches where he's just not going to shoot if you make him. Mm -hmm. He's going to pass the ball no matter what. And then he'll go through stretches where he's going to shoot, you know, every shot <laughs> and get a more of an equitable balance throughout the game. But frankly, he's playing at a level that no one could expect. He's shouldering a load that no one could, could expect. And any criticism of Russell Westbrook has to be through those lenses, which is this is pretty, this is pretty small potatoes criticism. The guy's playing phenomenally. All right, so Thunder Thursday is wrapping up. It's obviously Thanksgiving as we're taping on Wednesday. We know you're out there eating your Thanksgiving meal. So we got to ask, favorite Thanksgiving food, Barry? Oh, I'll probably go dressing if it's moist and there's gravy. You know, you don't get it. I don't know why people don't make it for me in uh, May or October or any other time of the year. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I can get it in, uh, I can get it in, uh, in uh, Thanksgiving. So, uh, and... Hopefully they make a big tub because there's be a lot of leftovers. <laughs> and Friday, my favorite day of the year is Thanksgiving. My second day favorite day of the year is the Friday after Thanksgiving. Because of the leftovers. Leftovers and football. You're, yeah, I was gonna say you're not going out on Black Friday the no, day after. So no. I've got the girls, football. me and the girls. <laughs> football. Football. What is football? <laughs> Thunder at Nuggets. I'll be watching the Thunder right. Nuggets <laughs> after a day of football. Okay. All right. Brett, what about it? I'm like Russell Westbrook. I'm, I'm, uh, as he said to us the other day, I'm getting through it all to get to the desserts. So it's pumpkin pie for me. Pumpkin <laughs> pie is my, by far, that's hands down the Thanksgiving food of choice. I, you know, I do love, I love turkey. I'll admit, I love the turkey, even though I eat turkey sandwiches probably, you know, 100 days out of the year, uh, just for whatever random meal. But I do like the turkey, but I'm all about green bean casserole. We were having a pretty mm -hmm. serious debate about this, Barry, the other day. I you debate it. I just don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you didn't have mine. You you prefer the broccoli rice, broccoli, rice cheese. And cheese. Oh yeah. Yeah, that yeah, casserole. Yeah, is that yeah, yeah. is that a? Um, I, I like a, a sweet and sour green beans. It's a, it's a little oh. different thing than the, than the casserole. Coming I'm from the, as, the the the, the Carolinas. Thing? Maybe let's yeah. say it's a, maybe maybe yeah. it is a Kentucky thing. Right. It's a my mom thing. So well then that's. that's she's here. She's making it this week. <laughs> I'm all for it. It sounds great. Sounds fantastic. We hope you have a great Thanksgiving. We will too. Be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.